Hello fellow coaches, this is Quiz World TV coming back at you with another tutorial video on advanced play of Stratomatic Basketball. Uh, in my first video, I talked about how to set up the advanced action deck. Uh, basically, it was consisting of 60 cards for a quarter of play. Um, we shuffled them, we put in different tabs uh uh, to uh, and, you know, specify different intervals of time within a quarter of play within a 60 card deck. Um, so now this video is we're going to talk about how the deck flows within a game of play, whether solo or against another player. Um, for this particular video, we are not setting up players. Uh, we're just going to talk about what we're going to be looking at when different things happen within whether it's a passing play whether it's a fast break rebound i'm just going to go and give you scenarios on different things that may occur uh when you know interacting with the action deck um another video uh that i will post at some point will then also include players and looking at different situations and basically playing maybe a couple of minutes to get a kind of flow. But I wanted to really make a, a video on interacting with the action deck. So let's try this first. Uh, let, I should say, let's, let's, let's get into something here. So basically um, what's going to happen is after you, after you um, get the deck going and you have your player cards uh, set out into your, you know, your, your positions, basically you're going to roll two, um six-sided die and those six-sided die when you roll them are going to basically tell you jump ball results so let's just say you roll two six-sided die and you get an 11 you know that the visiting team has the won the tip and they have the ball so in this case scenario the visiting team has the ball so you're automatically going to go and flip your first card now the action deck card consists of various different information it has Basically, the home side is always in your top left-hand corner. Your visiting side is always on the right side uh, top corner. And then you have other various different information that is on the card for uh, different types of plays. Um, whether it's a half-court set, uh, fast break, maybe uh, a team is in a press defense. Uh, it also talks about um, you know rebounding. It talks about... Um, um, it also talks about uh, different numbers that you may need to uh, do different things um, on whether it's a player's card uh, or whatever may have you. But again, uh, for this video, we're just going to show you the, the, the pace of how these cards go um, and what happens on various different cards that are flipped. So in, in the last in the last with the tip, uh, the 11 was uh, again, 11 was rolled. Sorry for the lighting. Uh, 11 was rolled. Visitor team has the ball. You automatically fit the first card. And you're always going to look at control. Control normal, which is usually what happens when a game starts. It's oh, Both teams are in a, in a normal set. Uh, in this case, the visiting team has the ball. You always flip the first card and you look at control right away. Control will tell you what's going on. It could say right guard or whoever the particular player may have the ball at the time. Um, it may even say a passing play. Um, but normally it will say either uh, pass in some regard or a particular individual uh, player uh, position that will be controlling the ball. So in this case, the visiting team caught the ball. The right guard has um, the ball. OK, let's just say, um, you know, I was I, I love the 90s. So let's say Michael Jordan has the ball. He's he's playing right guard. So Michael Jordan got we got the tip visiting. Michael Jordan has the ball because he's playing right guard. The first card here would always tell you who has it. You have to flip the next card to see what happens with the visiting team. So basically, anytime you only you see one reading of a player position on any control you always have to flip the next card so the first card visiting team has it it says normal right guard they were in a normal set under control then you have to flip the next card always flip the next card whenever you look at control for a single position 
you always have to flip the next card to see the play. So in this case, visiting team got the ball. Michael Jordan is the visiting team because he's playing right guard. He has the ball. We're going to go here. It says visiting team replay. Replay basically is just a setup. So basically the play broke down. Maybe they tried to drive, but they couldn't take a shot. They passed it back out to the top. They're resetting. Okay. So replay tells you now there's a reset. Never flip the next card when you're looking at control. Okay. We're going to be talking about control in another video. So we're just talking about the game flow here in regards to the action deck. And I'm sorry, um, and I may be talking a little bit fast. I'm going to be trying to slow that down. So basically, visiting team got the ball. Right guard has the ball. It's a single uh, position. So, you know, you flip the next card. In this case, it says visiting team replay. Play broke down. You automatically go and look at who has the ball. So basically what happens is that in this case, Michael Jordan, let's say 1992, uh, he maybe went to the basket, didn't have a play. He passed it to the top of the key to the center, Bill Cartwright. So Michael got the ball, play broke down, replay. Bill Cartwright got the ball up top, and now a new play is starting. So again, what we do is, because we have a single position of control, we have to flip the next card again. And this is how the game flows. The cards keep moving. All right, so then we can keep getting into more time of the quarter, okay? So now, again, Bill Cartwright now has the ball. The next card is flipped. We're going to go look at the visitor because it was a single player. So that Bill Cartwright has the ball. It says, in this case, replay unless three shooter in a lineup position shot for three shooter. Uh, we are going to get into... Um, the basically the, the 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 shooting ratings of players we'll get into another video but in this case i can tell you that michael jordan normally is a three or higher shooter i think three is the highest so let's make believe that okay in this case michael's in the game of course so cartwright right has the ball it says replay but it says there unless there's a three shooter in the lineup in this case michael jordan would be a three shooter he would then take a position shot for a three shooter so then you would take your your black die with the two d6s with the two six-sided die you would roll and then you would take a shot based on whatever that is it could be a shot off of his own card it could be a shot um, that would be specified on the defensive card of a team or it could even be uh, the X results, the basically the defense, res um, I should say the X column on the bottom right hand corner of the defensive card. Uh, but we're going to get into those type of cards later on. So let's just make believe for this particular case. Now Cartwright has the ball. We checked our shooting rating. Michael Jordan was a three shooter. He took the shot. Let's make believe he missed it. Michael Jordan took a shot from the top of the key. Uh, outside shot. He missed it. Now you would have to go down to the rebound portion. It's You're going to hear this a lot of the last discarded card. So whenever you have cards out here, very important not to, sorry with the focus, very important to not flip these cards. I'm sorry with the focus again. Just trying to set this up again. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, now, Michael Jordan ended up mi uh, missing the shot. Now, a rebound is going to come. And this is the section where you would see what the rebound would be. And then this comes off of the uh, rebound ratings of different players. Like this says defensive right forward one. Let's make believe um, the Bulls are playing the Knicks. Uh, and uh, let's say uh, Charles Oakley is playing right forward. Uh, Charles Oakley, you would look at his uh, de his uh, defensive rebounding uh, rating, and it's let's say it's a two. So it says defensive right forward one. He has to be at least a one or higher for him to grab that rebound. In this case, let's make believe that Oakley got the ball because he was a, a, a one or better. So now Oakley gets the ball. You never flip the card. You always look at the last discarded card for control. Oakley grabbed the rebound. Now you got to see for the home team what the control is. They're in a normal set. Here's the card. 
It says here normal play, normal defense. I mean, a normal control. So it says right guard pass to any player for a position shot. In this case, it says flip next card, even though you would be doing that anyway. So let's just say uh, what a ninety-two. So uh, let's say Gerald Wilkins uh, had the ball because he's playing right guard. He now passes to any player for position shot. You can now pick any player. Let's just say he he picks Patrick Ewing. It says to flip the next card. With passing, right, in this particular type of control, it says right guard pass to any player for position shot. So there's various different numbers on here that you would be using at some point in the game when there's a passing. Um, when there's a pass, like for instance, see here, this says center pass to left guard. This is different than a right guard pass to any player for position shot. So right guard pass or any any particular position pass to a, a player position shot, you get to pick your player you, you want to pass to and they take a position shot. In this case, this actually tells you what it is. Center pass to left guard. You would then flip the next card to see what the number is in the corner and then you would go to that player's card and see what that is so i'll give you a quick example of that so i have here some cards that i have here that i just made some copies of here's a card from portland 1992 um you see here this is the normal passing of this so that particular card said center to left guard so let's make believe this guy was playing center which he is he's the center he is now passing to someone else that card, let's say, was flipped in this case. So let's just say this was the last defensive card. The card center to left guard, you would have to flip to get the next number. It says 17. You would then look at the passing card of the center, right? It says here 3 to 20 for position shot, 17, right? So said here center to left guard. So the left guard would then take a position shot that's how it works with these numbers down here at the bottom okay um but in our case here okay in our case here this said right guard pass to any player for position shot so um uh, let's just say the knicks had the ball uh, wilkins um ended up passing to patrick ewing we flipped the next card we automatically now take a position shot for Patrick. He usually would be an inside player. You would take an inside shot. Let's make believe this guy. Let's make believe it was passed to this guy. Then you would take an inside shot for this particular player. If he was taking an outside shot, it would be under here. Penetration, fast break. So position shot, he's rated inside. So you would take an inside shot by rolling the dice um and seeing what the play is um so listen this is a a lot of information uh in regards to what things are happening here i just wanted to explain the various different um things that would happen on action cards but this is how you flip so in other words now let's say let's make believe uh patrick Ewan made the score uh he made the bucket he took a uh he, he posted up he, he took a quick uh jumper he made the shot it's two nothing Knicks last discarded card you would then go to see on the visiting team who has the ball it says left forward let's make believe uh horace grant is the left forward then you know that horace grant has the ball and what did i say anytime you see a single position in control you always flip the next card to see what happens within the visitor so let's just say in this case horace grant had the ball you flip the card it says opponent defense 21 and again, I'm getting into some of these other rules that I didn't want to get in, but I'm just giving you a little bit of play. Um, opponent defense 21, let's just say make believe this guy was guarding. You would go to the opponent. He's the opponent defense. You would look at the defense and you go to 21 in this case because there's various different numbers. It said opponent defense 21. You would then go here and you see that it's a steal. This guy ended up stealing the ball. Let's just say, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Let's just say he rolled a 50. Then that means that, I'm sorry with the thing, it says here 50 position shots. So that means that Horace has the ball, opponent defense 21, 
you then look, uh, let's say 50 in this case, 50, it says position shot. So that means that Horace Grant would then take a position shot by rolling the dice. So that, that's very various different things that you would be looking at uh, based on these cards. So as you can see how the flipping is. So I'm just going to go over some stuff. So this is basically looking on the defensive uh, uh, player's card. You got uh, things like outside shot. So let's just make believe. Here's another one. Um, the left forward has the ball. Remember what I said? Single position. You flip the next card. Let's just say it was the home team. So for the left forward, it says outside shot only for player position outside. Inside shot for uh player uh position inside so you would go to horace grant and say okay how is he positioned is he positioned outside or inside oh he's positioned inside so it says it inside shot only for player position inside so you got to see which one they are and then that's what you're taking if um the player was positioned outside then he takes an outside shot position inside takes an inside shot he rolls the dice right let's just say he makes the shot then this would come into play telling you who possibly gave you the assist? In this case, it says RG for the first reading. Um, that would be the right guard. The right guard passed the Horace. He took an outside shot. There is an assist on that play because this is referenced here. Let's make believe Michael. It said right guard. Michael took the outside shot. All right, he makes it. Then the assist rating would say right guard. It can't be the right guard because Michael is the right guard. So you always would use the second reading, which would always be different from the first. So in this case, right forward, let's make believe that was Pippin. Pippin gave the assist to Michael, and that's how you would rate it on your um, on your score sheet. Um, there's various different other things on these cards, like uh, you can sw there's switching. Right, that's a, for another video again, but that's uh, basically, let's just say, um, I'll give you an example here, I'm sorry. Uh, right forward, whoever the right forward, let's say, say the right forward is uh, Charles Barkley, and uh, he's playing visitor. You Remember, it's single, single, thing, a single uh, position. You would then flip the next card and it says switch. So now, this switch situation, right, Barkley is with the ball. The defender is the right forward, right? There's a switch. So it can't be the right forward because normally the right, remember, Charles Barkley's playing right forward. Uh, the right forward would automatically be guarding him anyway. So you have to, it says a switch. So it gives you a second reading. So then you have someone to switch. So now this says right guard. Right guard would now be in a switch um, a situation and he's guarding Barkley now. So Barkley is working the right guard and now says any open shot, whether outside penetration or inside, Barkley can take either one of those three in this particular case because it says he can and it would be an open shot. So let's just say you say, you know what? Barkley was positioned outside, but you want him to go work the guard because Barkley is bigger in size than a guard normally. Uh, you want to take an inside shot and it would be open. You would then roll your three dice, see what that is. Let's just say he makes the shot. Then there's an assist rating on here to see what that basically is. Um, uh, just different things like that. Um, we had, uh, here we go. Let's just say um, the home team, the home team took uh, made a basket. Now you have to look at control again. Now this says left guard pass to right guard. There's not a single position um, uh, specification here. Now there's an actual pass that says when this happens, remember we said about the other one, which one was it? This one said right guard to right guard to any, sorry, my son's coming down, uh, right guard pass to any position for shot. That is different than a rating a specification of center pass the left guard. This is where the position player would set it. You can pick any position to take a shot. This one's actually giving you who the pass is going to. So this one would be right guard pass any position shot. You can pick your player and then you just automatically roll your dice based on um, their positioning. Here, you would actually center to left guard you would actually go ahead and uh, let's say Bill Cartwright to Paxton, and then you would flip the card, right? Because it would either one would have to flip the card. This one says automatically flip the card, but you're not looking at a bottom number. This one you have to flip the card to get the number based on passing ratings.
and numbers and information. So uh, again, not trying to get into the, uh, the the actual rules on how things work. I just wanted to show you the various different things on a on a on a on a particular card. Let's just make believe that uh, I don't know someone took a shot. And there's a rebound situation because he missed. Then you would go down to this section right here and you would look at rebounding. And it would give you various different information on who maybe grabbed the rebound. Uh, sometimes, let's say, the, first, the, the, the in this case, maybe the offensive center got the ball and he took an, a, a, a quick shot. Then you have to go to the second reading because you already used the first reading on your rebounds. Um, so there's various different information on these these different cards. Um, as you can see, again, in the uh, top left-hand corner of the home, there's an outside shot only for a position player. That You'll see some of those. Uh, you'll roll. I just wanted to uh, give you several different cards here. Uh, you know, opponent defense, 41. Uh, sometimes you'll get, again, you have a, a, a switch. Sometimes you'll get, um, again, replay. Three replays in a row uh, is considered a 24-second violation. Uh, I'm trying to see. I know there's some. Um, uh, sometimes, again, it will, say, it will say actually turnover up here automatically. Here's an open outside shot rather than just a, an outside shot. for This is an open. This is just a regular. Um, so, any case. So, these are the type of uh, cards that you're going to see. And, again, it's always control. After a made basket, I want to reiterate, after a made basket, you always go to the last discarded card for control. Depending on what it is. Are, you in, are they in a press defense? normal defense or a fast break offense that's what you're looking at so again oh there's a made basket this is the last discarded card the the, the other team gets the ball and this is what's occurring you would have to flip the card in this case to get the number sometimes sometimes there's a single position and then you have to still flip the card to go look at who is actually taking um you know what information you would have to look at for that particular player so again you're flipping cards and you're getting down to the nitty gritty and eventually you're going to get down to like for instance here, boom, you flip that card. Now you're at the four minute mark and you have these cards left. And that once you get past all these cards, right, the quarter is over. You have to shuffle them again and you have to set it up for the second quarter, third quarter or beyond. Uh, and that's it. Um, that is how basically the action deck flows. Um, and hopefully this video will help you out with that a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm I, again, apologize, second video ever. Um, so hopefully my videos will get better and uh, we can uh, see about other rules for future videos. Again, thank you for your guys' time. Uh, let's get into uh, some more basketball. Have a great day.